welcome to my crazy life. It's Lori, and yes, I'm wearing the same clothes as my Dollar Tree haul. I decided while I was sitting here to go ahead and stain the bunny because um, it needs to dry overnight. So when I get home from work tomorrow night, I wanna be quick about this. So let me show you what the materials we're gonna use, and then I will get to staining the bunny. Uh, this wooden bunny I got at the dollar spot at Target. It was $3, this is wood. Um, I just took the sticker off the back, and here's a little trick for you. Their stickers are terrible, so I take my hair dryer to it and um, peel up all of the sticker. It, it gets the sticky part, and then there's a little bit left of adhesive. I just take a little block sander and just kind of take off any of the adhesive so it's smooth because I do want to stain the back. I probably am not going to decoupage the back, but I want to stain the back in case depending where I display it. Um, so I'm going to stain the bunny. I'm not staining this because it's going to get painted with some chalk paint, but this was one that, I mean, this one has a sticker on it too. It also works on Dollar Tree stickers. I'll have to take care of that. But this was from the Dollar Tree, obviously a dollar. And then I have my foam core board that I'm going to trace something on one of these and show you how it works on foam core board. I have napkins that I purchased at the Dollar Tree and I grabbed these two because I liked the design. This one has the bumblebee and these are in blue. They have the pretty scalloped edge. You'll need scissors, pretty good scissors. Um, for me, I need stain, but you'll need paint or stain and then you're gonna need Mod Podge. This is actually from the Dollar Tree and this one is high gloss. They have matte and high gloss. So this is high gloss. I have more, but that and paint brushes. And I think that's all we're gonna need. So let me change the angle here and I will show you how I'm gonna stain the bunny. And then we will go to bed because I'm still tired. But that way when I get home tomorrow night, bunny will be stained and ready to go. Oh, and rubber gloves if you're staining. I just need one hand because I'll paint with one hand and then I'll sop up the stain with the other hand with this this hand all right one minute all right I've got my Minwax Jacko Bean which I love stain here and a paper towel to wipe up so let's put our glove on first um, stain is oil-based. You really don't want to get it on your hands. If you can avoid it, it just is a pain to get off. And I have a paper towel to wipe up. Um, you can use a rag, a paper towel, whatever you seem to have handy. And I have a paper towel over my surface because I'm going to be super careful about this. Um, and I'm just painting it on, but look how dark it's going on. That makes me happy. Um, and plus, once this then is dry, I will know what color napkins to use because you want to be able to see them, obviously. But all I do is you paint it on, you let it sit for a second, and you rub it off. And that's it. And then this will pick up any extra. Some people dip and rub it with a rag, but I'm not that person. But look at that. Is that not going to be beautiful? I love this color of dark wood. And I think with the contrast of the light flowers will kind of be beautiful. And the little bumblebee is going to be pretty. So that's all I'm going to do is stain this tonight. And I'm going to let it dry overnight, both sides and the edges on this one. Because it is super thick. On the Dollar Tree one, you could totally stain those as well. I don't know if I'm going to stain this or not. Maybe, but I doubt it. I think I want to do this with paint, like white or pink. And this is with the stain to be done. So I can show you the different ways to do it. All right, we'll be back tomorrow when this is all dry. Welcome, welcome, welcome. It's Lori. And I have got the things painted and dried. And I'm going to show you how I'm creating my decoupage which is really kind of exciting it's very old school 
So first of all, what I've done, because I wanted to show you, you can make this with all Dollar Tree stuff. This is that foam core board. I traced the bunny on it. And then I've taken my X-Acto knife, but you could also do like a nice paring knife or scissors even, um, but the scissors do kind of crimp it. And all I'm doing, you're watching your hand behind. You can see my pencil line. I just plunge it in and kind of use a sawing motion to trace this design. With, oh, whatever design it is that you're wanting to use. You can photocopy something to trace. You can use um, coloring books to get pictures if you don't have a printer or you don't want to print something and you find it. I would say with the coloring book you want a very basic design. So I've gone all the way around this and I'll show you what it looks like when you use scissors. You kind of get a, it sandwiches it together. So it's not ideal, but you can do it. And here's my bunny. I got some stain on him. That's okay. I'm going to paint it white. But what I think I'll do first, if you see my edges are kind of rough, good old sandpaper will smooth that right out. You see that? Like right here, it's kind of zigzaggy. This is just foam and paper. Just go over it, and that cleans it right up. All your edges. It's really pretty awesome. And then on the inside, if you want, or even if you don't have a filing, you can use an emery board and clean it up. So there, I have a bunny. It's the same as my wooden one, but this is made out of that foam core board. It'll sit up. You may want to glue something on the back just to give it some weight because it's very light, but it will definitely sit up on a counter or in a tray or stand of some sort. So we have that. When I'm finished, I'll clean it up, paint it, and decorate it. Um, but I wanted to show you the steps that I'm doing. So this was from the Dollar Tree. Um... I did have a question if I didn't say these napkins came from my Dollar Tree, both packages. And what I do, I leave it folded in this design. And for the first cut, I'm honestly just going in close and cutting out the white that I don't need. I'm kind of licking my fingers here because this is napkin. It's so fine. Open it up all the way and it will be a circle somebody had mentioned maybe putting this on a picture frame that would be awesome and then you want to separate the two layers of napkins which comes apart as you can see super easy and look how thin that is and what I do is just find a spot where I think it's ideal to cut it in half just because you're gonna to want to use sections like that to decorate and I have some of the pink over here and some of the blue, and I'm going to use a little bit of both. I took the Dollar Tree wooden flower, painted it yellow. I just thought yellow would be fun. And all I'm doing is taking, let's say I want to use this one flower right here. Since my flower I'm cutting off a lot of this white. You don't have to. I just want to. And then I'll say, okay, well, that's going to go right here. And I want it to kind of go off a little bit. But I want to keep this flower definitely right here in the middle, but off-centered a little bit. This is how easy this decoupage is because this napkin is so thin. I'm literally dipping it in my Mod Podge. And just painting it over and it soaks right through the napkin and you want to get the edges make sure your edges are very sealed that's really important and then I'm gonna go over this when I'm done you can go over it with Mod Podge um, I have some water-based sealer so I'm gonna seal it with that just because it's easier 
and I have it. And you're going to want to let this dry before you seal it. That's really important. Oh, this is so pretty. And it'll get wrinkly, but when it dries, it'll straighten out. And you can do it anywhere you want. You can put words in the middle. And then I'm taking my X-Acto knife or my kitchen knife. And I'm just going to kind of scrape off. You really want it to be kind of scraped off. If you wait till it dries, you can sand it off. And the same thing over here. Because you don't want it, you know, sticking out on the edges. But how pretty is that? Here, I'll show you again. I've got a bumblebee here that I think will be super pretty. You can put it anywhere you want. Maybe he'll go down here on the opposite side. And I'm just kind of fussing with it and say, okay, well, I like you right here. And you want a decent pair of scissors for this. I will tell you that. And he's going to end up I want him right there. And on this flower, I will probably totally cover it where the bunny, I'm not. And I'll show you the bunny here in a second. But I want to show you this again. I'm literally, literally just painting over the tissue with Mod Podge. Um, I wouldn't say using Elmer's glue would work. I think that dries white where this dries clear. And that's it. He's stuck. My little bumblebee is stuck on the flower on there. You can put a word in the middle. You can put a letter in the middle. You can do anything you want. And like I said, you could use these tissues on anything besides just wood. You can pretty much Mod Podge anything. And then I'm doing that. And if it's on the edges, I'm okay with that. I'll sand it when it's dry. But I just want to make sure that I'm cleaning the top as best I can. I'm just kind of scraping it off. Because it's wet, it will clean up nicely. So there we go. And then what I've done with the brown bunny, oh, I love it. I added some down here and it's still wet. And I liked it, it's kind of crinkled up. And then I did the ear up here. And I haven't cleaned this off yet. In here. And then I will seal them up. So let's see. Oh, that's a pretty flower. Let's see. Here's two pretty flowers over here. And I really like that yellow. So I think I'll go that way. And maybe we'll do it across his little face over here or something down here or up on this ear maybe. You could do his ear up there. Or I could take a small one and just put it across the middle of his face. We could do that. Just because I really like this dark brown and I would prefer not to cover it all up. I think what we will do is just do two blue flowers. There we go. And we'll go the same direction as that. And I want to show you what I'm going to do um, when it goes through one of these ridges. So I think that's perfect right there. So we'll get some Mod Podge. This is the high gloss. It really is irrelevant because I'm going to seal it. So I don't care if I had Mod Podge in the um, high gloss or the matte. It's okay. It's just I need it to dry before I can throw the sealant on it. And I have my Minwax Polycrylic water-based sealant that I'm going to use. Looky there. Now in, and I want this to seal the edges. But in this line here, if you can see where the, my lighting is terrible tonight. Um, just by painting it like that with the Mod Podge, it 
pushed it down into the um, the groove of the fake shiplap. It is faux shiplap. Let's call it what it is here, kids. This is faux shiplap. Get the hair out of there, and that's it. I mean, I don't know how much more I'm going to put on this bunny. I kind of want, like I said, want him a little sparse, um, just because I love the wood. So I might put something up here on the tip of his little ear and maybe something, and that might be it. I think just on the tip of his little ear up here is all I want. And I want it to be something that's pretty. That little flower right there, it's, well, maybe. I don't know, do I want a pink flower? I don't know. Uh, I always am afraid of like overdoing things. Because, you know, I can overdo stuff. I don't know. I kind of like him with the plain ear. But then I like him. Um, I like the blue flower in the middle. I don't know. I like this one. So let's move on. Let him dry. Because we're going to do this guy up. This is going to get completely covered. With the flowers, and I'm not really concerned because I'm covering it all up. So we'll do that, and you just want it wet. So what I'll do is I'll fast forward here so you can see what I do. Definitely, when I decorate with it, it will go in the middle of some stuff on my mantle, but you could totally put a picture in the center. Now, like the other chipboard, this does curl until it dries, but I just think that is so pretty to tuck in somewhere with that unexpected floral. And then with my bunny, I think I'm going to leave him as he is and just kind of, um, kind of patchworky with the flowers, but I want the rest of the bunny to remain so I'm going to seal this up I'm going to let that one dry and then I will bring you along and show you how I'm going to put it on my mantle all right here's my mantle for Easter spring there's my fireplace is all clean decided to leave my home sign up and there's my head but I'm going to bring you on to the mantle now the fencing in the back is from last year at the Dollar Spot. No, at Dollar Tree, I spray painted it. There's my little cloche. Here is my bunny I just made. Oh, I love him. Her, him. And then behind my bunnies over here, I have my little floral, which may or may not live there, we'll see. And then this is just all stuff I had from last year. Oh, and I have my little candles. So that is it, everybody. There is my decoupage bunny. Oh, I love it. I think it's very rustic. My cloche that I made the other day, and then here is the floral. So I hope you guys like it. Enjoy and have a good weekend or week or night or day. Bye.